Hey everybody, my name is Dan Shimolinski. People like to call me Shimmy, and you can too. And welcome back to our sample school, our deep dive into sound paint. Now we really have covered just about every nut and bolt in this amazing engine, teaching you how to browse and select parts in libraries, treating them through all kinds of effects and controls, using modulation to get stuff moving and making truly one of a kind instruments in sound paint. But today I thought we would take a moment on how to make sound paint your sound paint, because there are quite a few options on how to personalize this engine, really make it your own and put you right at home inside sound paint. I want to talk about a couple things. So let's go from the bottom up, quite literally, starting with this awesome keyboard interface that we have down here. Now the keyboard interface shows what keys are being depressed when you are playing them, positions of the pitch and mod wheel. And you might notice that as I put my mouse down here, there's this little plus sign. This is a relatively new addition to sound paint and you might not know about it, but we have given you the option to label and color coordinate certain ranges of the key bed. In practical usage, this is great for libraries like Adastra, where you have many different strings that play naturally in many different ranges. It would be good to quickly see what the natural range of each instrument is so that you can deliver the most realistic orchestral experience. But you can define your own ranges and labels using this simple interface down here, and I'm gonna show you how. Let's say I'm playing a flute, and I wanna remind myself what the natural range of that flute part is. I can simply select a note by clicking the plus sign I immediately get a little editable range slider and it says click to edit. I believe the natural range of a flute is C4 to around C7. So I can drag that down here to reflect what I'm going for and I can say natural range flute. I can also change the color of this slider. You have a wide variety of options down here. I'll stick with green. And then you can see whether or not the notes you are playing fall in that natural range. You can add multiple labels and say bass flute, something like that, and change the color so you can quickly see that something is, you know, different. The ranges can overlap if you want them to. And if you want to delete them, you can just click the trash bin icon right there. And if you don't want to see the keyboard at all, you can go ahead and just toggle it off. Now there is another toggle down here that I am obligated to mention, but uh, I advise against it. <laughs> you can switch from night mode to day mode. This is night mode. I almost always use night mode, but we here at SoundPaint like to give you options. And we recognize that maybe your studio, your screen, your interface, you want a brighter pop, you want a more day look. You can do that by simply toggling over to day and everything becomes very bright. Down here, you also have some CPU related stats here. And as we've discussed before, a total voice count and MIDI CC velocity and number. This is your mixer and you can see in real time when you load a part that the bars pop up and you can see exactly how much volume is coming into your left and right channel. And yes, you definitely can max it out. And when you see red, it also turns red up here on the volume slider. To reset that, you can just kind of give it a little wiggle and you're good to go. But if you ever hear distortion in your mixes, if you're ever hearing distortion in your instruments, take a peek down here and up here to see if you see any red. If you do, you can adjust the volume control up here to kind of counter it. Or you can adjust all the instruments individually to give you that perfect gain staging balance. Next, I'd like to take you to the settings menu, which is this little hamburger menu up here. So in the master settings menu, you have access to a lot of different parameters and account information. Clicking on account will make sure that you have access to your key, the type of license and your username. You can log out if for whatever reason you have multiple users with different accounts or you can click Manage Account, which will bring you to the SoundPaint webpage to do things there. Moving on, you have Audio MIDI Settings, and this is the place to go if you are pushing keys and no keys are registering on the virtual keyboard. If you are pushing keys and you see sound is happening, but you cannot hear sound, maybe the pitch doesn't quite sound the way it should, this is your area. Make sure that you have the correct output if you're using an interface, it's gonna be the name of that interface, or if you're using headphones or speakers, it will either say built-in output or headphones, and you can test to make sure everything's working by pushing this button here. You can set your sample rate and audio buffer size. It's just making sure that all of your settings with your DAW and interface are cooperating with each other. If you have multiple MIDI controllers connected and you wanna only select one, you can find it here. Or if you want multiple, you can obviously do that too. MIDI channel lets you select which MIDI channels sound paint is responding to. Currently it's set to Omni, so that's all. But if you're a big MIDI channel user and you have controllers sending different channels to different devices, you can specify which you'd like sound paint to respond 
onto here. If you're using SoundPaint as a standalone program, not inside of a DAW, you can specify what you'd like the BPM that everything is synced to in this menu. Moving right along, we have some awesome user interface preferences. Let's click on show this again. Every once in a while, you will get a pop-up window when you make a decision in SoundPaint that you might not want to make, be it replacing a program, clearing a program, checking for new purchases, or seeing a pop-up about something that was saved in a newer version of SoundPaint. You can toggle those pop-ups on and off here, or when they happen, there's an option to say, don't show this again. Then you can change the font sizes. I'm gonna go ahead and load a program here so that you can see everything in action. Let's head back and change the font size. You can change the browser item font, the program name font, and the part name font. Just a really cool way to kind of customize things and make them your own. It can also allow you to avoid the ellipses here so that you can see the full part names. Next, we have change the window size, which allows you to change the window size. And toggling this on will keep that configuration every time you load SoundPaint. We know everybody has a wide variety of screens and monitors and SoundPaint looks beautiful on all of them. One more thing in this category I do want to mention, there is a little variable tab here to change the size yourself. So that can be good if your ideal size is somewhere in between those settings. In mouse settings, we only have one single off and on toggle. This allows mouse wheel motion on text editors. So currently, if I wanna change a number, like say this pitch, my mouse wheel can control that number. That is consistent throughout all of SoundPaint. But if I want that same effect on something that, say, has a letter or piece of text in it, I can do that as well by scrolling, say, notes in a key range. Toggling that off will keep the mouse scroll to just numbers. Next, we have browser settings. I'm gonna start with this bit down here, browser name optimization. You will notice that if we go into say parts, the full name of a part actually includes the name of the library in it as well. But you don't see that until you hover over the part. That is optimizing the browser. If we head back into browser setting and we turn optimization off, you will see that now the parts are listed with their library name as you would see it in the part window when you load it. And I typically leave static browser on, which means you manually can switch between parts and programs. But if we change this to adaptive, if I load a program and I'm in the program section here, and then I start dealing with the part, I click on the part, you will notice that it changes from program to part. Let's do that one more time. I'm loading a program, which is a combination of parts. Let's do something with a couple parts. And I am very much in the program section. But let's say I wanna change one of these parts to something else, maybe in the same library. Instead of clicking on part, going to that library, selecting the part space, going back over there, clicking the part I wanna replace it with, I can simply just click on the part I want to replace. And instantly that is shown in the browser under the part section, under the correct library. So adaptive browsing is trying to give you the user are the most relevant area on the left side of the screen. Moving on to automation settings. This one is really clean and definitely slept on in terms of a hidden feature in SoundPaint. By default, it's set to full range, which means when I go to assign a piece of, say, MIDI CC automation, it will instantly have the range set to 100%, max low to max high, regardless of where the slider is currently set. But if I want the range of that slider, the top part, to automatically be where my slider is currently set, I can use adaptive range. And when we go to do that again, you'll see that the top of the slider is where the slider was currently set. If I move my volume up and I do the same thing, Boom, the top of the range is always where you currently have the parameter set. This is a great one. In the automation video, remember how I was dragging it from 100% to where I had it set, the dashed line? SoundPaint can do that for you. Moving right along to manage library and part directories. Now, if you've ever found yourself in SoundPaint wondering why a library isn't showing up, I bought this, I downloaded this, where is it in SoundPaint? This is where you go to sort that out. You will see the directories that you have in your browser. If you have multiple drives with different libraries, both should be there. You can trash a library if it's reading a drive where SoundPaint stuff doesn't exist, but the button to push is full rescan. Say it with me, full rescan. This will take all the drivers in your list and reformat your library so that it's encompassing everything that exists on your drive. 
saving program to a user library. In the next video, we will be making some programs from scratch and cover how to do this. But for now, just know that this is where you're gonna go if you wanna save a current configuration to your own user library. And you have a variety of sharing options if you wanna share your creations, your amazing programs, either exporting the active program, active program in parts, all user programs, importing user programs, or sharing them on our Discord. In Sound Paint, we have a really easy way to get to a user sample editor. You do need need it downloaded as well, but clicking on user sample editor brings you into that program. You might remember this from the very first video when I made the bottle instrument. I used the sample editor. There is an entire video on just the user sample editor, but here's a quick run through now. We're going to go back to my bottle note and drag that in to the sample editor. I can affect the attack, decay, sustain, and release of my part. I can toggle on loop mode, which will play the sample over and over as I hold down a key. I can add multiple recordings on each note if I want, or as I did in the first video, just stretch the range the full length of the key bed and let it speed up or slow down the recording until I achieve my desired pitch. Then when I'm ready to bounce this over to Sound Paint, I can type in a part name, Seltzer Bottle, and head up to File, Generate Part, select where I want it to go. Then when we head back into Sound Paint and click on the user library, as opposed to the factory library, which we've been in, you'll see that it shows up and I can load that part right into Sound Paint. Shop will be a quick jump to our website so you can purchase more libraries if you wish. And finally, check updates and purchases will allow you to make sure you are on the latest version of SoundPaint and make sure that you have all your purchases on your account. So that is a quick run through of how you can make your version of SoundPaint unique to you and your workflow. And next time we will be making sounds from scratch using everything we've learned to make some programs that are unique to you. Anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. This is Shimmy signing out. Take care.